Not a day goes by with not massive news out of the United States and the best in the business is the wonderful Megan Kelly. Her show has been amazing the past couple of weeks and it's so good to be able to see her face to face via the internet. Yet again, our favourite time of the week is to talk to her. Hello, mate. Wow, a lot's happening. <laughs> Just like all day, every day. So let's talk about JD Vance. Uh, you did an excellent interview with him where basically you kind of offered the off-ramps if he wanted to take it with the crazy cat lady stuff and said he doubled down. Also, correctly, you showed some of the context. That he's not just talking about random childless people. He's talking about the types of people who end up uh, you know, running institutions, politics, media. Um, but of course, all of that context doesn't matter. It's just anyone without a child is a crazy cat lady. Uh, outrage ensues. CNN has another bucket of new stuff that's happened in the past couple of days. Um, let's cut to the chase. You spoke to him. You looked into his eyes the same way that I do you now. Is he going to make it? Yeah, he's going to make it. Trump doesn't backtrack on big decisions like who his vice presidential running mate is going to be. And let me tell you, I've been through this long enough to know no matter who Trump selected, they'd be going through this. They would have found plenty of dirt on Doug Burgum, on uh, Glenn Youngkin, on Nikki Haley, on Ron DeSantis. Any of them would have been demonized in whatever particular way that they had a weakness on. And this is, I mean, as weaknesses go, this, is, this one's kind of pathetic. He said some provocative things on cable. He stirred the you-know-what to get attention on an issue and was kind of, you know, pardon the term, catty about making his point. That's He's not the first to do that on cable news. I mean, look at the way Trump talks. And he got elected president. This is not a deal breaker for J.D. Vance. The Democrats don't have a lot on J.D., and they do consider him a massive threat given his genuine ties to Appalachia and the white working class. And they're trying to do their best to stir up hatred for him. Hatred. I mean, that's, they just sent out a tweet saying he hates women. And why are they doing that? Because they've got to drive up their numbers with the women vote. And they are really, really hoping that Americans will forget that it is their party that's in favor of making women get punched in the face by male boxers masquerading as females, by making our little girls go into locker rooms and see penises everywhere, by letting 14 year old girls have their breasts chopped off when they express a little gender confusion, but really what's underlying it is depression. That's their party. And so they really want us to get upset over childless cat lady comments that JD said on a cable news show, leading us to believe he hates women and not them, not the ones who are actually chopping off the breasts of young girls who might be going through a bout of temporary blues that come with the onset of puberty. It's insane. And they have a compliant media who will push these lies as they push lies that, oh, J.D. Vance, he's reversed his position on many, many issues from just eight years ago. And they'll trot out some trans friend of J.D.'s from law school saying he's reversed himself on everything just for money and power without calling to attention the fact that Kamala Harris has reversed herself in the past 24 hours on at least four massive policy positions that would actually affect millions of Americans. It's incredibly frustrating but it's our media and it's a challenge that Republicans face every election cycle. Is the power of the machine as effective as it was in 20 or even attempted to be in 16? Because it feels to me like even in the New York Times poll, the number one source of people's news in that poll in the US is social media. Now, by extension, I would suggest that that means YouTube shows and lots of other things that are not the traditional newspaper TV show. Do you think that we're dealing with a different market that is trying to play the same game? Look, they don't have anywhere near the power that they used to. But if you're talking about activating the Democratic base, they are still very powerful, very powerful. I mean, it was essentially the news media that got Joe Biden out of office, or at least out of his second term candidacy and potentially out of office. We're not sure who's running the country right now. I'll get back to you. Um, so they do have a lot of power when it comes to Democrats. And they're exercising it. They're they're energizing their base. They're trying to reach out to those. You know, independents are kind of split, maybe 55, 45 Republican, Democrat as a rule. You know, leaning, and uh, they're trying to get those 45 incentivized to go out and vote for Kamala, and try to rewrite her all of her history. So you can't write them off as feckless yet. But yeah, I mean, compared to what they used to be in terms of influence, influencing the entire country, 
they're a shadow of their former selves. It's actually really kind of fun to watch them express frustration at the loss of, you know, holding the national narrative over these massive conversations. They can't stand the fact that J.D. Vance came to me, for example, to have his come to Jesus interview after those cat lady comments blew up. They, they hate having to cite someone like me in the New York Times, which they did, um, because it's an admission that they don't have a monopoly on power anymore. And I noticed like the Wall Street Journal, they did a podcast about J.D.'s comments. Did they cite his interview with me in which we discussed? No, they waited until he sat down with a Fox property, Trey Gowdy on Fox News, and cited that because they really don't want to come to grips with the fact that their old model of business is dying. It's hanging on by a thread. But as I say, within Democrat circles, it's still alive and well. What's your sense about how the election is being consumed by people? I mean, I think it's the summer. And in general, people don't pay much attention to the news in the summer. And that's not different now. I mean, it is the election cycle. So we're all getting bigger numbers than we would get in a non-summer year. But I think the average American, the ones who are going to decide this election, they're outliving their lives. So they'll start to pay attention more in September. And then things are going to tighten, as they always do. And they tightened already once Kamala Harris became the presumptive nominee. But they're going to get even tighter. And we really have September and October to finalize the messaging around each camp. So, you know, we're going into August. July is basically over. That gives the camps one month to try to gear up their messaging and figure out what attacks are going to land and which ones they want to run with in the final whatever days of this election. But early voting is going to start as as early as, you know, late September. And so, you know, it matters whether people are paying attention. And in those p critical swing states, it matters a lot. I think the problem for the Republicans right now is that she has such a short runway and that she's not going to be so battle tested. And battle testing Kamala Harris would be a good thing for the Republicans. We've seen her enough, those of us who are in political news and follow her closely, to know she usually sounds moronic. She does. If you give her enough time to talk, she will confuse you with her word salad to the point where you're not sure you and she speak the same language, right? Is it me or is it her? Um, she's not particularly clever. She's not particularly likable. She's reversed herself on everything. She is a far left liberal from San Francisco. So if we give her enough time for exposure, the country will see that. The problem for the Republicans right now is they don't have it. They don't have said time. Megan, you're the best in the business and we love talking to you each and every week. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. See you soon.